Perfect. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and, hello, Dr. Shabazz, we're just calling to order now. I'm gonna go ahead and call the May 2nd uh, meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 3.06 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And we have Alexis too. Excellent. Welcome. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, nice to see you all. So um, we've got Oh, we've got a, a good agenda here and um, we have a hard stop at four o'clock. We do have another meeting scheduled for next yeah. week um, and that will be from three to 4.30. Um, this, there was a conflict with some of our schedules today to go beyond four. Um, and Herb, I don't know if you're leaving even a little sooner than four o'clock, um, but I'll keep the meeting going until four. So you can... So oh, you might be muted or I um, have no idea what happened. I'm going to have to do whatever. OK, well, I I know that there's a mingling portion of that event that's going to be a half an hour. I've learned in the front end. So um, the programming doesn't start until about 430 for that. So um, just to give you that. Oh, do we lose Irv? Oh, okay, he's back. <laughs> All right, so All right. We, you're back. Or... All right, so so my problem is is that I am under a concussion protocol, so my screen time has to be lim limited. Oh, what happened? You don't want to talk about that right now, I'm sure. I hope not you're... right now, but it's it's one of those things where I listed as um, stupid mistake number I think five in my life. <laughs> I think it's five. I think I'm up to five. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, you do what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, um, let's review the agenda quickly and um, we'll, I do want to make an announcement in the front end in case you have to leave Dr. Shabazz or Dr. Um, Rhodes, because I want you to hear this announcement. Um, but let's look at our agenda. So we're going to today we're going to have an update on the community survey. We're going to talk about an operating and administrative budget um, for our body. We're going to revisit the Black African uh, American census that we haven't actually had a chance to review since it's been presented to us. So having some discussion about how we might use that. And then we have earmarking cannabis funds. So that's gonna be a conversation about um, FY23 and what we wanna do with respect to our asks of the town um, and specifically um, related to earmarking cannabis funds. So, and we have minutes to approve. So why don't we go ahead and quickly get the minutes out of the way. Um, I'm going to move that we approve the March 3rd, March 14th, March 21st, March 28th, April 4th, and April 11th meeting minutes. Go, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there a second? Second. Oh, who is that, Rhodes? Second. That was Rhodes. Okay. Um, so I'll start with you, Hala. I was going to um, voice the unreadiness. Okay. Could we add with any necessary corrections? Because I haven't had time to read them all. So I don't want to pass them if something like blatantly. So could we just say we'll pass them with any necessary corrections? Absolutely. Yes. And if that is the case, I say aye. OK. <laughs> so um, we will move then. Yeah, we're moving to approve those minutes with any necessary amendments um, upon review by assembly members. So we have an I, we have Alexis. How do you vote? Yes. OK, Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand is up too. You're good? Yes. 
Yes, and um, Yvonne? Yvonne, yes. Okay, and Miller is a yes too. So those pass, good. I think I got, you guys all moved around as I was going through the vote, so. Um, all right, so I did wanna make a couple of announcements um, that are really exciting developments for the assembly and that we'll have an opportunity to talk about at a future meeting when it's actually on the agenda. Um, the first is, hang on, I'm just pulling up my notes here. Here we go. Okay, so I received an email from Mara Keen um, about a week or two ago now. Um, and Mara is on the Amherst Community Land Trust Board. And she wrote an email. Um, I'm just gonna actually read a little very quickly what she said. She said, we have as one of our goals to increase home ownership among Amherst's African American residents. Although we have helped five lovely families to purchase homes, none have been Af of African heritage. And so she went on to say, she wonders how we might be in collaboration um, and how uh, the Amherst Community Land Tr Trust may work with us um, to make that a reality. So we are gonna bring Mara and um, Paige Wilder who are both on the board to our next meeting to have a deeper discussion about that. But I just wanted to make that announcement today. Cool. Um, and then the other announcement, which is really exciting, is the Association of Amherst Students um, at Amherst College. So essentially, the Amherst College Student Senate. Um, which is a 33 member elected body comprised of eight senators from each class. They have formed a committee for reparations and they reached out and this is a very exciting news. I had a meeting with them today. Um, so the person who reached out to me is actually uh, the president of the whole AAS. Um, but is also on this reparations committee. And I had an excellent conversation with them. They have two primary goals. Um, so th that body is ta it basically collects the student activity fees and then distributes them out into the um, Amherst College community. And they have what's called a rainy day fund. And they are able to make decisions about how those funds are used. And so they're, they have two primary goals, one of which is to make a donation to the town of Amherst's reparation fund from their rainy day fund, which is amazing. And then two is um, to work with us to achieve our goals. And there are lots of possibilities that we talked about canvassing, um, going door to door, educating, getting the community survey out, um, helping us with research. Ultimately, um, they want to work with us to be involved um, with the town's effort. And um, we're going to bring them back, hopefully at our next meeting, but maybe depending on how long they need to work out some details um, to a future meeting. So those are the two exciting announcements, partnerships, and um, folks are just really, you know, the words getting out in Amherst and beyond, and the support is really beginning to come in. So I think that's really exciting. Dr. Shabazz, I do see that your hand is still up. I just want to check in with you. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So let's... Um, start with the community survey. I have an update for you all on that. I have been working, um, taking some of the input from you all and also looking at some models in uh, to create a draft. Um, and when I was in Washington DC for a reparations uh, conference a couple weeks or now, I guess a month or so ago, I met Luan Allen and Luan Allen is the Director of Policy and Partnerships at the City of Providence, Rhode Island, and was integral in developing their survey. 
um, which was very successful from what I can tell. Um, they received close to 400 um, survey responses and they really developed a, a fantastic survey. So Luan uh, has agreed to one, review our survey and two, to come and speak with you all and with us about what they learned, um, what was helpful, what wasn't helpful, what would they have done differently if they were to do it over again and what they're still learning from the process. So um, I've asked Luan to come back uh, to our next meeting to have that discussion. And in the meantime, he'll have an opportunity to review um, and then give us feedback. So as soon as I'm finished with the draft, I'll put it into the packet um, and then you'll have an opportunity as well and, and to weigh in. And, and then of course, we'll talk about it in the bigger meeting. Any questions about that before moving on from that? Not seeing any. All right. So there are two items that before Irv has to leave, I really want to make sure we get to. Um, and the first I think we'll go to is the conversation about earmarking cannabis funds. Um, and this was something that I'm going to pass it to Dr. Shabazz to talk about um, just for a minute, if you wouldn't mind. This came up in a budget forum that the Progressive Coalition of Amherst and Sunrise Amherst put together. Um, it was an excellent forum. I was really happy to be in attendance and really appreciative to be there to observe and listen as a counselor too. Um, but this came up uh, as a, a, a point that um, that the AHRA, that, that folks would like the AHRA to discuss. Um, this has already been something that we've discussed previously. And in fact, that we've directly asked the town of Amherst to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just open things up. And maybe Dr. Shabazz would like to begin and just say a few words about that. Just a very few words, uh, because I think more words will come out uh, in a statement that um, Sunrise, uh, let me tell you, the young people uh, are, are <clears throat> incredible. Um, they really, this is the upshot of a, uh, beyond the work of the forum or what happened at the forum, although that was completely open and the statement is going to be drawn from conversations that came up at the uh, forum that was held at, uh, at Hazel's in downtown Amherst. But um, the but within it, uh, their voice in particular, looking at um, our own work of what we you know sent in in November. They 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 do their homework. They study these these things. They follow it up, um, and so it, it, that was a came out at the forum. But even beyond that, they are talking about getting in on the road, getting knocking on doors, going in the streets to get the word out and to say, you know, how, how are we uh, gonna move uh, for, for reparative justice in Amherst? They are, they're on it. So um, yes, I think that's uh, the general gist of it that it's in support of our own document that we submitted, we wrote, worked on and uh, finished up in October and put in the hands of the council in November, they are asking, folks are asking, where is the movement on the council toward having an earmarking discussion per the work of the AHRA? So that's, that's where we hope then. Um, however, we as a body might want to respond or not. I just hope that counselors will hear it when this statement comes out. And as they see the work these, uh, that, that folks are doing, that maybe they'll, they'll find a way to put it in their calendar. Pretty, uh, some response to us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And just to give a little more framework to this. Um, so it seems like a long time ago that we made those initial requests. And then we sort of had a reset as a body and determined that we needed another year to work on this because we couldn't sort of catch the wave of the FY23 in time. We hadn't done our educational or engagement work yet. So 
we extended our time frame so that we would be part of a second budget cycle um, for FY24. So that the FY23 budget cycle, and I was going to pull up the calendar here, I did put it into the packet. Um, it's really coming close to being completed. So um, we know that last year they put $206,000 um, into the reparation fund to seed it. Um, and they base that off of the cannabis dollar amount. Um, so potentially we would be asking them to do that again for FY23 with the knowledge that we're going to be making a much more significant ask for FY24 when we've done all of our work and, 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 and educated the community, engaged with the community, and gone through the process that we're here to do. Um, yes, Irv, please. Um, I believe we are now on FY22, is that correct? Next year, uh, starting June, starting July 1 is FY23. The following year is FY24. Yes, and it just gets confusing the way that, let me pull up this calendar. It is, it's so confusing, but um, hang on. I'm gonna do this real quick. Um, it's, it's just confusing, you know, because uh, you, what you need to, the way I remind myself is that 23 and any year change, the year change comes in January. So that's just a year change. So, uh, and the fiscal year always is, is one year ahead of that. So that when January comes in, then we're on, on that schedule. So this year is fiscal 22. Next year is fiscal 23. In other words, the budget that they're working on right now is fiscal 23. Right. That's what I mean. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just um, also pull this up quickly. Um, I will share screen. Um, okay. Do you all see that? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I'm on the finance committee, and so I can say for sure that we are moving through this budget now, um, department by department, and um, I encourage anybody who's interested to come to the meetings. Uh, it's going it's a it's a pretty heavy schedule for the month of May. But what we need to decide, and I will tell you, I've asked Lynn to place this discussion of whether the town council wants to commit its cannabis funds to reparatory justice on our at our next meeting on May 16th not tonight's meeting but May 16th so we have to and i just did that as a placeholder if we're not ready that's totally fine but i did it um so that if we want if we're ready on May 16th to to bring that and to ask the town council to have that discussion. Um, it's important to note that cannabis funds have not been earmarked for anything yet. They've just gone into the general budget. And I now see that Dr. Shabazz has a hand and then uh, Dr. Rhodes. Dr. Shabazz, you're muted. Thank you. I was, I'm having problems trying to pull up our recommendations, uh, all of our recommendations from uh, that, that was delivered to the council on November. But I'm also wondering, did we ask that um, the uh, uh, free cash be whatever is certified, uh, <clears throat> be prioritized? Uh, I know there were other recommendations besides cannabis. That was only one out of a number, ARPA, other kinds of budget streams. We every it seemed like we left no stone unturned. So I'm wondering, did we do we have other requests besides the discussion of earmarking that um, uh, was out of our previous? And how are we looking on those in terms of is that somewhere needs to be? Is there some horizon in which they might respond to some of those questions? I know we've put the reset button on the overall time frame of things, but if we at least can have some feedback that yes, we're those recommendations. To be honest, we've never heard back from our recommendations. 
We worked hard to get that in, you know, in November. I know one of the upshots was uh, not so much an upshot of the recommendations because they were very much related to budget. But uh, we did ask that, uh, I mean, uh, there were a number of asks that I don't know if, if those have been thought through. Uh, the ARPA, the uh, other kinds, but I, I'm really, if I find that document, I'll just try to uh, condense my points on that, because I think that's really also what people are saying. Dr. Shabazz, do you not see it? I just put it up. Can you, do people see it? So this, is, this was what we, this was, our, the, this was the chart of our original um, requests. Um, so, to answer your question, my understanding is you're absolutely right. We didn't receive a response to this. And so we could frame the town council discussion on May 16th to include a broader discussion about responding and just overall having counselors discuss um, funding the reparation fund. Um, my understanding was that we were going to make our sort of big ask with the next budget cycle and for this cycle, what we what are we gonna ask um, given that we've extended our time frame? But if other folks have a different idea, um, we should definitely talk about that. And Irv, I see your hand. I, I think you're correct about that. The, uh, the other thing is, is if, and, and I'm not sure of this in terms of cannabis uh, money, if we were going to ask for that uh, as an AHRA earmark or whatever. Uh, the question I have is, is that, a, is that something that uh, the town manager would have to include in his budget? If not the town manager, who would, who would uh, present that as um, a part of, of the budget? And the reason for that is, is that at some point in May, I can't remember when, the town manager will present his budget. Now, and, and the reason that is important is that when the town manager pre presents his budget, uh, the budget cannot be changed in terms of going up, but it can be changed if it was to be lowered. So it's critical if we were going to do anything to look at that and say, hey, we would like this cannabis money to be earmarked for AHRA, and, and how do we go about doing that in an expeditious manner? Yes, exactly. And just so you know, um, Dr. Rhodes, my understanding, um, and so that everyone knows, my understanding is that the council has not had that discussion yet about what or how cannabis funds should be used. So you're right in that town manager Bachelman is the one that's coming up with the budget and presenting it to the council. Um, but the conversation is a legislative, based on my understanding, conversation where the counselors have to really talk and discuss how they would like to see that money be spent. Um, I will absolutely clarify that, um, but that's my understanding. So this is where what you're saying, or this budget's getting finalized at the end of the month. So if we don't get on that May 16th, meeting to have this discussion and to present whatever arguments we want to present that we're going to be too late for this budget cycle to do that. Dr. Shabazz. One, one more thing uh, sure. for all of us to understand it. Uh, fiscal 24 and fiscal 25 are going to be extremely tight years, especially the fiscal 25. Uh, 24, uh, I project all kinds of budget fights happening in fiscal 24. So if we, are if we are going to position ourselves in such a way in terms of uh, for AHRA, it's going to have to be done very early in the budget uh, process uh, because I guarantee you that every penny that can be siphoned up will be siphoned up by other, uh, other departments. Uh, especially the municipal department. Yeah, yep. And I, I can say just from being on the finance committee, I can second that, uh, that it is gonna be, there are a lot of demands, a lot of, um, and, and, and also, you know, um, 
yeah, we have a tight budget um, and it's going to take some creativity. Um, and I think on our part too, and on the town's part, um, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I'd like to make a third on that, a third emergence on that point to say that rescue me if I'm wrong. And this is really more a conversation of just us now. Um, when we made those recommendations, we made them yes, without thinking that we would then put forward a, a change in our time horizon for our planning work. But in my mind, at least, that changed environment for our planning work did not change the urgency of building the fund that we work so rapidly and so hard on weekly in September, weekly in October to get this interim report or a, a, a statutory report. I mean, this was set up in our charter that we needed to report in. And so we took that urgency on, we made that report, we made these that reflect the certification of free cash coming annually. We saw the whole flash up. The point is, I didn't think that our time horizon changed for building the reparative justice fund just because we changed our, high, our time horizon for our planning work as a body. We changed our planning, our, our, our horizon, but that doesn't mean the town can't continue to do what it did out the gate which was begin to, was moving that certified free cash into a stabilization fund. So we were, we were operating from, let's keep doing that. That doesn't change like, okay, we can put the pause on it now until your, 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 your June 2023 report comes out, then we'll figure out if we, if we re no, don't put the pause button on. Deal with those financial recommendations, act on them incorporate them in this year's budget and the next year's budget and 20, you know, begin to grapple with incorporating them because when we spend it, how we spend it, that may take another year, 2023, that may take another year after 2023 to go into, but you need the funds building. That's at least was my mindset. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Anyone else want to comment, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, absolutely, I do not think that our work plan changed or paused the requests that we have made. What I do think, however, is in terms of our success factor, we'll be much more successful once we've completed more of our work. Um, and so I think we should ask for something this fiscal year, and we should be very clear about it. And if it's cannabis, and if we're if, we, if that's a discussion we want to have, whatever discussion we want to have, it's got to be on May 16th. Um, and so that's really, I think, the most important thing here. And we will have another meeting before then, so we can sort of, we're not totally pressed, um, and I would be curious what other members think. I think our big ask will be most successful um, once we've done more of our work. And I think we should be asking for something this year as well um, in this year's budget. Yes, um, Irv. You're muted, Irv. To your point, um, if we are to have any earmark of that cannabis money for fiscal 23, uh, we need to find out how we, what do we need to do to move this forward before the town manager presents his budget? In other words, how can we get it into his budget? And I think, Michelle, you being on the finance committee, you can ask that of, of the committee and or of Andy. Uh, in terms of how we go about doing that. Uh, because I don't know whether that needs to then go through a whole discussion with the entire council, what the council's timeline will be with acting on that. But anyway, that is an issue that we really need to get on now. We want to have that cannabis money. Yeah, and that's why I, that's why I, um, 
asked Lynn to put it on the May 16th town council meeting um, agenda, because I think that what needs to happen is if it is the will of the council to earmark cannabis funds for reparatory justice, then the council needs to tell Paul that and it needs to express that to Paul. Um, and that's how I think it will, if it's, if, if, if the earmark happens, that's, I think how that will happen. Um, so what I would like to do is bring that to my colleagues on the 16th and at our next meeting really have a solid plan for what it is that we're asking, how we're framing it. And then of course the council is gonna have its own discussion, but we really need to make the case to my counselor colleagues that earmarking cannabis for reparatory justice makes sense and is is the the place to put the money um and so and then and then if it is the will of the council they will make that clear to town manager Bachelman and and that's how i see it would be included and even aside from that like i said last year the 206,000 that they that they took out of the stabilization fund it was modeled on the cannabis money. So they were already thinking in that direction. Just it, the conversation hadn't happened by the council yet. So they didn't make that decision final. And um, Dr. Shabazz, please. Final thing, just to be clear, I'm I, in no way do I think the sense of our discussion is um, that we're, I want to come at the idea of our, the success factor of our planning work and our hitting our benchmarks to June 2023. You know, there's a lot we got to do. There's a lot we got to, you know, solicit from the community feedback. There's a lot we didn't have to process in the way of certain, certain kinds of frameworks about the eligibility question, who is, who is reparatory justice designed to impact? What are the priority kinds of areas we're hearing from community feedback? I know we've got a lot of, there's a lot between now and June 2023 and a lot of benchmarks we need to be, be ticking off to show, you know, to have a really compelling plan backed by compelling evidence. I get that. But I'm really responding to the sense of the council's commitment, as I saw in their putting the free cash, like you say, whether modeled on cannabis revenue or, or, or not, I just saw that that step looked as though they weren't waiting for the plan, they were starting some funds. So if you're starting, why stop, why pause? to see the success factor of the AHRA. Keep it coming, build it. That incentivizes AHRA to do its work, its pro bono work, and to do it hard and to do it fast, to hit those benchmarks so that by 2023, as this fund has continued to rise, we've got a, a compelling plan to present to them for their own discussion. So. I'm just saying that's the sense I read in the council's own actions. But if if they're you know in more of a pause mode now and more of you know let's let's let Paul do whatever he wants to do with the money and you know we're going to wait and have a deeper discussion about whether it's cannabis or whether it's next year's free cash or whatever it is, I get it. Take your time, you know, and we'll continue to do our work. But if but if I read it correctly and the council wasn't waiting on a plan to begin to build a fund, then I say, as far as from AHRA, keep at it, folks. Give the, the, give the, 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 the town manager the, the directive that, hey man, keep as much, begin keep building this pot of money out of whatever we can spare relative to, to everything, because then that sets us up for the hard years Dr. Rhodes is talking about in 2024, 2025. If you don't start making the resolve to, to, to build these funds and prioritize these funds around reparative, or reparative justice work, now 
how hard, much harder is it going to be to have those discussions getting into these tighter years? Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Yeah. Um, are there any other comments or questions on this? Um, just to sort of wrap wrap it up um, based on what I've heard so far, uh, what I'd like to do is um, get together some really solid evidence that links cannabis, um, you know, the cannabis industry with reparative justice and why those two are coupled and linked and make sense and um, get that and potentially, and I, I'm not sure how successful we'll be, but if I can identify somebody who can offer testimony on that, um, there are scholars and non-scholars alike that are talking about this. If you just do a quick Google search, you'll find a lot of great information um, about why this makes sense, what other communities have done. If you look at what I put in the packet that came right from the cannabis, um, the CCC, I think they're called, they explicitly say that communities should be using um, cannabis tax revenue for racial justice initiatives. Um, and so if anything is clear, that is clear. Um, and so uh, what I would do, propose to do is to draft a memo um, to my colleagues on the council to perhaps get somebody who can come and offer testimony that understands this, um, and then to get that on the May 16th agenda for discussion. Um, and it doesn't have to be limited to that, but it can be focused on that. Um, and so I would bring that all back to you at our next meeting before that. So we all have, actually will have two meetings before that happens. So we'll have more time to discuss it. So if that seems like a, a fair plan, then um, we can move on. But if there are any other comments or questions, this is, uh, please raise your hand. Sure. Chime in. Okay. All right. So the next um, thing that I'd like to discuss before Dr. Irv, Dr. Irv's uh, time limit expires on his concussion um, is the operating budget. And I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so we've been talking um, over the last few weeks about having an operating budget that we can use to do our work. And uh, let's see here, share screen. Okay. So I haven't put any numbers in here. I simply broke down what I thought were the categories that we needed to look at and cover. Um, and of course we can add or subtract from these categories, but I really wanted to, we have $206,000 plus, I think there may have been some contributions from um, community members into the gift fund. So I'll have to ask Paul to provide or Sean to provide what the latest is. We also received our $500 from the Amherst Cultural Council, but that's for a specific project. So um, we need to decide how much we would like to set aside so we can keep things really clean and transparent for the community for our operating budget. Um, and then we need to ask, um, I think, depending on how we want to do it, um, anything, sorry, anything coming out of the fund needs, I think, a two thirds vote by the council. But I can, I also need to talk to Paul about how it will work. Um, but before we do that, I think we just really need to get a sense of what we're thinking for our projected needs in each of these areas. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up because my dog's barking anyway. <laughs> so. So please raise your hand if if you want to speak to this.
Dr. Shabazz, I think I saw your hand. Um, actually, let me check. Yvonne, did you have your hand up first? Okay, why don't you go ahead and start? <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Um, I guess I'm curious about where these categories came from and, um, you know, what they mean. And if there's, if we're allocating money for these categories, then it, for me, it doesn't make sense unless we know what they are, what they're for. Are there specific expenses that are already known? for these categories? That's a great question. They're very rough. They came from me. They're, they came off of our plan. Um, so our multi-phase plan, when I looked through it, um, I know that we'll need money to do community engagement um, and education, um, as well as any professional services we may need. Um, well, but like, for instance, you said community engagement. Would that mean, is that hiring someone to do workshops? Is that printing? pamphlets is it you know what is it because i'm saying that those would be you know if we hired someone to teach workshops that would be professional services and not community engagement or for instance or the same with community education or you know honorarium is kind of a professional services thing as well so i guess i'm saying you know it would be nice to know what we're spending money on and how yeah uh, more specifically yeah, what I hear you saying is we really need to develop a budget that reflects the actual work that we're going to do. Yes, 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 I agree. Um, I think the purpose for trying to at least have some projected amount, like even if it's a, a lump sum, be, right now that the money that's in the fund is for reparation benefits, or at least that's the way that people may view it. So we had talked, and I don't know if you were here for that meeting, Yvonne, um, but we had talked about setting aside some amount of money that can be transparent to the community that will not be used for reparation benefits, but that will be used by our committee to do the work that we need to do. Um, so it doesn't sort of get, um, you know, messy around that. We wanted to kind of pull it out. So perhaps what we need to do is really, um, one way to do it is to sort of try to take some estimates and put them in there and know that we're putting that aside and we're asking our town manager and our council that, you know, we want to put that aside. Those are not for benefits. Those are for our work. Because um, right now we don't have any other money to do our work. So when this stuff starts to, you know, when we, when we need it, we're going to, and, and in fact, there was a request, a specific request that came from Dr. Shabazz um, and Hala through the Black Assembly of Amherst Mass that we haven't addressed yet, um, which I'm not sure, again, Yvonne, if you were here for that meeting. Um, so maybe we do need to go back to that. And I think, did Irv pop off? I thought his hand was up, but maybe, did he leave? I can't see. Okay. So um, any other comments or questions right now to add to this? Yes, Dr. Shabazz. I just wanna say I uh, um, had similar question to, uh, to Yvonne um, <clears throat> in respect to, uh, <laughs> understanding how you drew the categories from the work plan. And I think that just means kind of when I think about the projected needs in those areas, I just sort of go back to that, that trajectory that appeared at least in my mind uh, a, a while back, that essentially what we're, what we're looking for is a way to um, not only create the evidentiary uh, empirical components of a plan of a of a document we're turning in in January 2023, and so there's certain work steps and there's certain professional services we might need in in crunching some numbers or in putting together the uh, the planning document and its support base. So there's that piece, but then there's also the piece in terms of the, de the development of what, from some language we got out of uh, our summit in Evanston, 
of developing the connection with the Black stakeholder community, okay? And um, the Black stakeholder community as it exists here to at least to where what I've observed, if there's some other components out there I haven't heard from or gotten in touch with or know about, then I'm only speaking from what I know. But from what I know, that emergent stakeholder group are, are trying to develop that stakeholder uh, uh, um, a group um, is in a place of, do we do this taxing ourselves to develop this community conversation within the African heritage community? Do we tax ourselves and come out of our money, whatever we have? Okay, or is there forthcoming a way of having a partnership with the town of Amherst that is putting aside funding? Now, if that can't work because Amherst doesn't roll that way and the home rule legislation, <laughs> which is going to benefits, not going to creating the community stakeholder group, which is a part of getting to benefits, you know, do we, do we just do it on our own or is there a way to have a partnership between the town of Amherst and members of the African heritage community, wherever and however they may come together, hopefully in a, in a unified, in a kind of organized way. But as we saw in Evanston, there, was di there were divergent constituencies around the plan in Evanston out of the black community. I'm just saying. So I just need to know, is there a basis of a partnership? Because I do know some, some people in the African heritage community that are trying to get organized, do wanna to begin to help organize the kinds of, of conversations, the kinds of healing steps, the kinds of, of, of activities that can say within the African heritage community, let's, come together on this and share and express our thoughts. Take courage, be courageous, be um, willing to come forward and, sh and, and build with others who've gone through similar lived experiences to you, maybe some that are not similar, but can we come together and, and develop an array, a, a response to this reparative, this call for reparations, all right? And that, so we're ready, you know, we can move forward. We can move forward on our own resources if that's what it comes to, or we can find a way that some of the support and the energies that is happening within the larger town community, town members, if there's some way to provide a way that uh, we can partner to get this effort organized, to get these opportunities out there. Now, that's just one idea. There's also the idea of mailers. There's the idea of, you know, that presumably we would draft some type of mail out. The survey is one step in that, in that, conversa in that uh, path. Uh, mailers to everybody, mailers particularly to the African heritage community. Uh, other forms of outreach efforts that we AHRA may want to directly, personally help to direct and organize. Yes, great. But I always saw there being two, two parts of this support piece that, that we were looking at on the screen, community engagement, community education. There were two parts of it. One is the part we as AHRA need to do to produce our report and that be a compelling report. But then secondly, or along with that, there is the work that uh, um, we may be able, to, we, want, we may want to support within the African heritage community in some form of partnership or another. But that's, that, that's how I saw it. And within it, I can certainly send notes, uh, send in my thoughts on using the, the categories uh, you came up with uh, from out of our work plan, uh, Madam Chair. So 
I can certainly begin to put in my thoughts on that uh, under those relative to the workflow in those two areas I envision. But somewhere we also need we do need feedback on how does the as the black stakeholder members of the stakeholder community organize. Is there any way to have a partnership <laughs> and a connection with the town of Amherst and receive some funds? Or, I mean, or, or if that, does that only just happen with businesses and developers or, or, you know, does it ever happen? Or do we have to wait till the home rule legislation before it can happen here? I, I, I'm just saying, I, I'm really at a loss. I don't know, but that's the two tracks in which I thought we, would, we could come up with projected needs on. I've said a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. Uh, Yvonne. I was just going to ask for some clarification um, for each of those categories. Is this about like we can um, work on this and then we visit it at the next meeting? That would and be really wonderful. Yes. So that, you know, yeah. descriptions for each category would would give the answers and make it very transparent for anyone who might look at the budget to know that honorarium means, you know, um, guest speakers or, you know, um, professional services means the graphic designer or the, you know, um, exactly. whoever, whoever it is. So just to as much detail as we can get into the categories. And then I think we can start to assign dollar amounts and the budget's $206,000 you said. Yeah, I'll get us an exact number before our next meeting of what's in there. I think it's more than a little more than that, um, but I'll make sure I get that. And I think you are absolutely right. If we could start to detail this a bit and if anyone has thoughts um, or wants to contribute to that, you can send it to myself and Jennifer and we'll add it into the, now that it's been daylighted, it's in our packet, we've talked about it, we can add to it um, and and so, yes, I will make sure that we continue this conversation in our next meeting. And are there other committee budgets that are available to us? I mean, I'm sure everything is public record, right? So are there yeah. budgets that we can kind of look at as a sample? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, that's the other piece that I was going to mention is I will have a conversation with Paul about how other committees get their work done and what sort of ways they budget. Um, we're unique in that we're a new initiative. And so we have to do some things and uh, that, that maybe other committees have already figured out and aren't, you know, so I'll have a conversation with Paul. I'll get us our exact number. Um, and then if you all could send me some detailed information that you would want to have added into there. I don't think we need to spend like, you know, weeks and weeks on this. And in fact, I'd like us to just come to something pretty quickly. But I do think that um, just so that we can be really transparent with our community about that and that we do have needs and we do want to compensate, especially um, members of the African heritage uh, community, either here or even outside of our community who are contributing to this. So, and Dr. Shabazz, I wanted to also say that I don't think to me personally, it would be a real shame to do this work, not in partnership and collaboration with the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts, and to have that work happening with no support from us um, and separately from us doesn't seem, um, I, I, for me, I would very much prefer that we were able to be in collaboration and support. Um, that's what we, you know, we're here to do that work. And so, let's let's let this process and we'll continue this discussion at our next meeting if that works for everyone all right um alexis did you or hala did you want to add anything to that okay <laughs> all right it's four o'clock and so i i know that we have some members of the public so i'm going to um, I do have to leave, so we're going to have to push the um, the uh, census off for the next meeting. Um, we've already talked about most of the agenda items for next week, as well as um, the announcements that I made earlier. So let me just do read the public comment statement. 
<clears throat> During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on. Please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will be listening and taking notes. Um, so if you would like to make public comment, please raise your hand. We do have four members in our uh, attending and I just wanna take this moment to thank you to the four of you who are here. Um, we really appreciate you being here and supporting our work um, and just really wanna share that gratitude out. And I do see that we have a hand up. Um, so I'm gonna move Ash Hartwell into the room. Um, let's see here. Hi, Ash. <laughs> I have to unmute myself. <laughs> Greens. I just, I just want to say thank you so much, to you, everybody, for doing this work. I couldn't agree more with uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz that building up the principle of an endowment is absolutely key before you, you can actually move. You know, you, you don't want to be arguing every year on nickel and diming for the particular activity, but you want to build up that endowment, that, that, that body of funds that then can guide the work. And I think that's the basis for the argument. And I thought that I, I commend you for looking at the research that links the cannabis funds to the need for uh, black reparations. It makes a lot of sense and there's uh, strong arguments for it. Um, I want you to also know that um, in, in other, other ways that uh, the League of Women Voters and other groups are looking to try to enhance the quality and the, and the focus of the consultations with the black community and, and uh, basically other people of color in this. Um, the reparations are for African-Americans, but the larger discussion of justice and equity is a larger community. And, and we're gonna be working hard with that. And, uh, so just, I wanna commend this and I wanna kind of be a, whatever we can do to, to support this work, we need to do it. And it's over, way overdue, so thank you. Thank you so much, Ash. Um, all right, so let's see if anyone else would like to make a public comment, um, please raise your hand. And yes, we have Lauren. Lauren, I'm going to move you into the room. I think. <laughs> it looks like you're moving. Okay, you were caught in space for a second. All right. Welcome, Lauren. Um, can you? Oh, oh sorry. Okay. There you are. I <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't necessarily be uh, commenting because, you know, uh, I just, I'm not really sure, you know, what the approach is right now for the, um, the assembly. So I didn't, I'm not sure if I should hold off when you guys have more community outreach, but you know, I feel like um, I always feel kind of mixed feelings of should I say something or not. But um, I briefly just wanted to um, share my thoughts because it's you know helpful for me to stay connected and just to you know voice some things um, out loud and to others. And I have been following um, some of the other reparations efforts. Um, in Sacramento, California, um, that have really been um, enlightening um, how they are, you know, moving forward with their work. And um, I just, you know, was interested in how it was brought up 
in one of, in one of their task force meetings that the term reparations is universal as well as slavery. So it's really important um, for us in you know the town of Amherst and and the communities that um, exist within Amherst to really understand what the perspective and the approach that reparations would be taking in Amherst. That could be like a faith community perspective, a historical education perspective, community enrichment in housing and education, which, um, you know, Amherst is very um, abundant in as, as, as well as land stewardship. Um, there could also be financial literacy perspective. Um, and I just, you know, wanted to um, put a focus on financial literacy because in the context of slavery, I feel like um, the Black community and its relationship to money is very different than other communities. So, you know, this can be very daunting, you know, talking about funds and talking about, you know, how you're allocating funds. And it just, we, we as when I say we, I just mean, you know, those who are following this, this conversation and your work, we, we really want to see, you know, some results, some tangible actions. Um, and so I just would just really appreciate, um, you know, the work that you guys are going to continue to do is that really, you know, specify because it's more than one thing, but really kind of help specify what the approach is. And there's more than one community. There's, you know, the larger community, but for, you know, African-American and black residents who want to be involved in this work, it would really help if there was more specificity and hopefully, you know, that would continue to be revealed. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to say is, um, you know, when thinking about the faith community perspective, um, there's the story of Joseph um, that I'm sure many are familiar with and how he was actually, you know, sold into slavery. It's a story of him being sold into slavery by his brothers and how the, the scriptures say that that was done in a work of evil or was it was done for evil, but God turned it into something good. And so I just hope that out of everything that comes out of this work is that, you know, African-American and black people and all those other, you know, communities who are aligned and working to support reparations and reparative justice is that we uh, can see ourselves in a, a new, like in a new perspective, because this really does affect generations after generations. And it would just be, you know, wonderful if we did not pass on these same, you know, burdens and, you know, old perspectives to, you know, the upcoming generation. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. All right. Um, if anybody else would like to make public comment, let's see, um, please raise your hand. I'll just give it one more second here. All right. So um, are there any member reports or anything that anyone in the membership would like to add before we adjourn the meeting? All right, well, thank you. Great meeting. We'll see you all next week. I'm adjourning at 4.10 PM, Jennifer. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next week at three o'clock. Okay, thank you. <laughs>